Okay, so let's begin here. Uh, today's bootcamp is mapping your program offerings in, in Central. The reason why I built this is one, to reduce complexity and increase your standardization um, within your N Central RMM. Okay, so this content may contain forward-looking statements regarding future product plans and development efforts, so on and so forth. What that basically means in a legal disclaimer is that if I talk about roadmap, you cannot take that as a promise to deliver because product plans and priorities do change. Okay, so who the heck am I? My name is Jason Murphy. I'm one of the head nerds at Enable. Uh, I worked at Enable previously, um, back when I, I think it started in 2013, and um, worked for Enable for about uh, five years. Back then it was called SolarWinds Enable. Um, uh, then I left to go work for a behemoth MSP, top 20 CRN rated MSP. I did some cool stuff there. I was the technology and security leader, kind of like a de facto CISO. I was a systems architect, program manager, and I did all a whole bunch of other things in between. I was account manager, I was an account executive. So I did, I, I put on many, many hats when I worked for that MSP. Uh, then I left to become the director of managed services for a healthcare verticalized MSP. But all in all, I have been focused on and central IT service management, operations, monitoring, automation for at least, well, it says here 10 years, but I've kind of been doing that for you know, the bulk of my career. So first and foremost, what is an MSP program? Okay, so when you're an MSP, um, you typically have a go-to market offering, right? So you will um, offer it to your community, your city, your state, you know, national provider, you know, international provider even, that you're an MSP that will do IT services. So based on that program or series of programs, um, you will need to then map your programs to things like monitoring automation. And then there's all of the inner workings in Central to be able to do that. So that's why I built this bootcamp today, because if you don't have a really good foundation in what I call five key components in Central, and we'll get to what those are, um, sometimes you'll just go ahead and kind of like use our defaults or you know maybe tweak a few things, but um, it's one of those things where you can get really, really deep into what your programs are and how to map them, uh, map those offerings within the Central server. Okay, so um, oh, okay, I'm trying to remember what the slides for. Okay, so why enable, right? Like why come to this bootcamp? So one, we're going to empower you with some of the highest performing products in the space. Two, we protect you and your client's data and your infrastructure. And three, partnership, right? So whether you're a tech, whether you're in sales and marketing, or whether you're the business owner, right? Those are three key reasons why people come to enable for things like, you know, again, you know, our boot camps. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, I'm going to go through three key uh, program offerings. Um, that you know I've designed and Stephanie has designed. Stephanie's our sales and marketing nerd here at Enable. And there's three key um, services, um, or I should say programs that um, that we have designed for you. And you can take screenshots of this. By the way, if you do ask me at some point to send you my slide deck, I cannot. Legal would not let me do that. So uh, please take any screenshots, throw them into Word, and you can obviously review them later. But this is the essential program. Okay, so to the right-hand side, you have IT services, security services, backup services, consulting, reporting services, and support, okay? Now, back in the day, because I've been doing this a long time, and maybe some of you have as well, because most of you have been uh, with us five years or, or more, is that um, when you talk about an entry-level program, you know, we used to call it the bronze program, right? These are basic IT services, you know, modest security offering, light backup services, light reporting and business reviews, and support services are time and material or block hours or money retainers, right? So basically any of the support that you're going to provide that customer, um, you're going to bill them for the time and material, right? Or what you can do is offer your customer a series of block hours. So, and that may, kind of keeps you on the rails as to how much 
that customer is going to consume in terms of support from you. So say they're going to pay you, pay you 10, 10 hours a month, right? So that could equal out to, let's say, $1,000, right? Something like that. Or a money retainer. They're going to give you $1,000, and then you're going to consume support hours and time and material from that money retainer, okay? Now, look to the right-hand side, right? So we have IT services. We've got advanced performance monitoring, network device monitoring and management, VPN monitoring and management, routine server and desktop maintenance, e-application maintenance and management, device optimization. And some of these go hand in hand, like device optimization and desktop maintenance, we might go uh, hand in hand together. Software license and uh, hardware asset management. And then for security services, we have quarterly security risk assessments, firewall monitoring and management, endpoint protection, patch management, Windows and third party, mail filtering and production, 2FA and password management, okay? And again, this isn't the Bible here. You can make this look any which way. This is basically a, uh, a baseline or a guide in terms of how you're going to create your essential program. In terms of backup services, you've got desktop, server, and Microsoft 365 if app, app applicable there we go okay now when it comes to training services basic security awareness training you know um you know it's one of those things that you may sit down with them and do a training session for an hour or what have you um consulting and reporting services monthly reporting asset life life cycle planning obviously working with that customer in terms of the age of their equipment or what have you semi-annual executive business reviews Okay, it is to your benefit to do this maybe even quarterly. And then support services. Again, help desk, time and materials. Reactive, time and material. Any emergency is a time and material. And vendor management is time and material. So any of the work that you're do doing in terms of consuming support from your organization is time and material, the essential program. Now, what is the advanced program? This is more like the modern silver program, okay? <laughs> so we're, we've gone from bronze, now we're up to silver. So advanced IT services, security offering, backup services, deeper reporting and QBRs, support services are still time and material block hours or money retainers, okay? Now, when we get into this, let's look to the right-hand side. Obviously, this is a little bit bigger. I had to take two screenshots. So for IT services, we have advanced performance monitoring, network device monitoring and management, VPN monitoring and management, routine server and desktop maintenance, key application maintenance and management, device optimization. And then for this, we have software license and hardware asset management. Now, as you can see, this has grown exponentially for security services, monthly security risk assessment, advanced firewall monitoring and management, endpoint protection. So this is where we start including things like Bitdefender or Sentinel-1. Patch management, Windows and third party, mail filtering and protection, 2FA and password management, anti phishing, dark web monitoring, DNS filtering, disk encryption monitoring, or disk encryption, uh, and, uh, internal vulnerability management, and mail archiving. Now, maybe you're a smaller MSP and you don't have anything for internal vulnerability management, and that's fine. You can use something like Nessus, there's you know, pen test tools out there, there's risk intelligence, you know, network detectives out in the market. There's a lot of other tools that are out there outside of what we offer here at Enable. I'm not here to plug our um, our products, but again, we do complement much of what you're seeing here. Um, for backup services, obviously we've got backup desktop complete, backup server, full data, system state, bare metal, right? If we go back one, right, critical documents, right? Kind of just entry level backup for documents. Okay. Here we have full data, right? Microsoft, at this point, if you're offering something like you know the advanced program, they probably have something like Microsoft 365, disaster recovery planning, and uh, BDR testing, right? Now, it would be up to you if you would want to do something like time and material on testing, or you could even include that as part of your advanced offering. 
Now, under consulting reporting services, it really kind of bridges out. You're doing monthly reporting. You're going to send them a report every single month. You're going to do typically, and it's to your benefit, to do asset life life cycle planning, compliance and consulting and enforcement, data access controls and enforcement, application control security and enforcement. Right? You could even use something like threat locker. Security policy creation and enforcement. This is where if you have VCIO services, you could really complement that. Security controls, recommendations, and enforcement. And then you have your quarterly, you still have your quarterly executive business reviews, your, your quarterly uh, business review, uh, QBRs. And then under support services, just like before, everything is time and material. And we, the reason why we do time and material is because one, you never really know especially to start off with how many hours that customer is going to support. So if you're trying to do this as a all in, you never really know what those support services are going to look like out of the gate. So this is a really good way to make sure that one, you're able to get some um, MRR generated from the customers, but also have some predictable um, and, and kind of a safety net around the amount of support that customer is um, choosing from you. Now let's talk about the modern gold program or platinum. And there's different iterations of these uh, of these programs. Again, I'm giving you examples. It doesn't have to be this specifically, but this is where we get into fully managed IT services. Okay, you are the IT department. This is the highest level of security. Okay, the backup services, deep reporting and monthly business reviews. Support services are now included. Focus on efficiency. Because when you do an all-in program, it is to your benefit to reduce the amount of hours, right? That is the that is the kind of the gold model, the gold standard in the modern program. So um, basically, you're going to ballpark how many hours that customer is going to use from you. So you're no longer doing time and materials, okay? even though it says that on my screen, I should probably update that. Um, under support services, it says help test time and material block hours. No, you're going to actually include all of this as part of your offering, okay? So my apologies for making a mistake on that screenshot. Um, but let's just go through the IT services. Again, same as before, and if you look, they're all the same. IT services are all the same. But this is where security makes a change, right? So from here, if I go back here, security services are the same, backup services are the same. Now more comprehensive and the support services are now included. And again, my apologies for making that that, that error on, on the on the screen. So now your support ser services are now included, which makes you focus on efficiency which is one of the reasons why you know, I wanted to kind of create this bootcamp. Now, what comes with an MSP offering? An MSP program will differ depending on what lenses you put it under, okay? What is dependent on the program? One, the master services agreement. It is a legal document that covers both you and the customer and makes sure that you both understand who is on the hook for what. There are times when you need it, you need information from your customer. It's up to them. A lot of that will be outlined in your MSA. Now, I do not go into MSA on this particular bootcamp. I'm sure Stephanie does on one of hers. Um, but number two here, go to market strategy. What is your offering? Again, bronze, silver, gold, um, or it could be something like starter program, proactive, fully managed. Um, and there's different iterations of those programs um, in between. This, most MSPs have a minimum of three. Some only offer one. We do only fully managed services. And if you are one of those MSPs, that is great because it makes your offering you know, um, very rigid, right? You're able to support it. You're able to offer high level of services because you're only offering one type of program. However, from my experience, MSPs offer many different types of programs, right? Or program offerings. Okay, the, the service, uh, service delivery model. 
the service level agreement and the payment terms in the contract. Everything kind of gets rolled into that master services agreement. <clears throat> so examples of the MSP program. Again, I've touched on a few of these. Fully managed. I've even seen, well, um, I work for a company that offered a fully managed program, but it was also, there was a fully managed plus program, right? Because we were able to offer high level or, and deep security services. So it was called fully managed plus. So we had fully managed and fully managed plus. And there was proactive. Proactive can be kind of like what that enhanced program is right in here, or the advanced program, I should say. It's an iteration of this into a proactive model. So it could be more than just um, what is included in that advanced program. Then there's an essential program, right? A minimum viable program, a starter program. But there are others, co-managed, right? Patch, patch and AV, patch AV and service desk. Again, you do those co-managed um, uh, programs to move upstream into things like mid-market IT or even small enterprise. Now, there are even MSPs now that are taking on full enterprise, like the Fortune 500. Okay. In just security programs, you may be an MSSP or at least dabbling in MSSP type stuff. Maybe you don't have a SOC, but you do everything else, right? So that is where um, you're going to be able to offer those security services. And now that because we've partnered with Sentinel One, we now offer uh, vigilance, right? We're going to be able to supply our partners that are using Sentinel One SOC services. And that's a really exciting venture that we're doing right now. And this can be any combination of the above, right? Now, just a quick show of hands. Are a lot of the programs that I've outlined, um, you know, those three programs in terms of the essentials, the advanced and fully managed, is that on track? Do you have the same type of programs? Just say yes or no, if you could. I might want to make sure that I'm not blowing smoke here. So uh, just let me know. Or do you, uh, we do fully manage and co-manage. That's Andrew. Andrew's always on my boot camps. Thank you for joining. Yes, somewhat, Zach says. Okay, good, good. I just want to make sure because, I mean, I've been out of the MSP game, well, two and a half years now since I was the director of managed services. So when I was the de facto, de facto um sales and and tech lead at my msp you know it was one of those things i kind of walked in the techs were doing one thing sales was doing another there was no real cohesion within the msp and then i realized really really quickly that somebody had to kind of put all the pieces together and it what it really ends up is that you put all the pieces together because you want to be able to support your customers efficiently you want to be able to offer a uh, high level of service to your customers. You want to differentiate yourself between your business and the guy who's charging 20 bucks an hour you know, because he's a one man shop, right? So those are the things that will make you better. And once you're dialed in, you're then going to be able to circle back to your RMM and be able to um, represent your programs within and central. Okay. So benefits of program standardization. This is what I call it. It's about standardization, right? One, you're going to mitigate and reduce risk. Now, it's funny. When Steph and I first talked about because I took a lot of what she offers in terms of her programs and I mapped it to this technical boot camp, we were talking things about a fully managed program. Now, it's called co-managed, but what co-managed really is is an a la carte offering. Now, the problem with a la carte, you don't typically go a la carte with your day-to-day -day SMB customer because you have no control over everything else, right? To say, hey, there's a 20-seat business you want to do business with, and all they want you to do is look after patch. The answer should be no. I'm not going to just look after patch for you. However, if you're looking at a mid-market IT department with 5,000 employees, I'm going to, I'm telling you, you're probably going to sign that contract. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's one of those things where 
co-managed is a la carte, but you do not want to offer a la carte services because you have no control over the other aspects of the IT, right? So yeah, you might be on the hook for patch, but what about all the other security pieces within the environment? What if they're all loose? What if they get breached? Is that on you? So that is exactly why we have come up with those kind of three more regimented programs because it covers you, right? However, when it does come to co-manage, you can go a la carte. Now, obviously it's going to improve your service delivery, right? Much of what I showed you here in terms of essential, advanced, comprehensive are just basically the same with you know small iterations afterward. This improves your organizational efficiency, your 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 operational efficiency, in fact, right? Because you're able to offer a high level of service um, overall. This allows you to scale. One of the things that I see time and time again, especially with MSPs, and I'm I don't need numbers or anything, but say you're a, a business. Um, you know, the, the MSP that I, the smaller MSP that I uh, was the director of managed services for, for example, that was a, um, uh, an MSP that had about 1.5 million in revenue. But we struggled really hard to get to that 3 million uh, revenue because, you know, I was only there for about a year, um, but I had to rejig the entire organization before we, I knew we could even get there, right? So this type of stuff allows you to scale. And then it also maintains your margins and improves your overall profitability. One thing you will find, and I'm not blown, I'm not blown sunshine, or I'm not being critical, I should say, I'm not blown sunshine, but it's one of those things where a lot of MSPs do not understand their profitability, right? So operationally, you need, to, from a sales and marketing point of view, you need to have programs that are going to keep you on the rails. Okay, managed services providers that, that have overly complex and custom solutions have created self-inflicted wounds inhibiting scale. Lack of scale ultimately inhibits growth and profitability. So the mantra for today's bootcamp is being able to scale, right? And to become less complex. We're in IT, this isn't just you know, ones and zeros here. We, we have to be able to make things complex, but we have to take the, the complexity out of the complex, right? If that makes sense, okay? Simply put, it's what you are on the hook for. That is what the program is. The MSP serv services delivery is also part of the program. Now, patching, what kind of encompasses everything that you're on the hook for? The patching of endpoints. DNS protection, mail security, monitoring, right? Because monitoring, when you're um, when you're not sitting on premise, right? You don't see the, the servers go offline or have, you know, the office manager come to you and say, hey, by the way, we can't access Microsoft 365 right now. You need to be able to monitor these things. Remote control, application compliance, license renewals, email, of course, file storage network and endpoint hardening S network as a service okay enterprise service desk optional sometimes if you're a smaller msp you can't scale to enterprise service desk integration service vendor okay, an isv for example you are um, a service now shop and you're able to customize service now for businesses that's a implementation services uh, vendor Software development, do you have developers on staff? Cloud services in a Azure, AWS, or even GCP. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Now, this is what you advertise, this is what you actually do, right? It's all the other hidden stuff that you do behind the scenes. Now, how do you build program offerings in and central? Now, this boot camp, I've never done this boot camp before, by the way. Um, so roughly when I kind of did my walkthrough, it was about two hours, right? It was about an hour and 45 minutes. So for all intents and purposes, this could be a two hour boot camp, or this could be actually what it's advertised as a two and a half hours. So um, just keep in mind, 
this should roll into about 10 a.m. Okay, let's talk about the core engine in NCentral. And there is one. Okay. Most people don't understand what I'm even talking about when I say the core engine of NCentral. But there are core components within your engine, right? Think about an engine within your car, right? You've got valves, you've got pistons, there's oil, right? Crankshaft, whatever. Well, I'm not. A, I'm not a mechanic, or even that mechanically inclined, to be honest with you. But it's one of those things. There's a lot of different things that go into that core engine, much like in Central. So, how do you build programs in in Central? The six things that you see here, five of them are core pieces. Automation kind of gets lumped into one of them. Um, but I like to outline automation because it is such a major piece within your program. It starts with rules, starts with tickets, service templates, custom properties, filters, and of course, automation. Now, when I talk about automation, I use a few things interchangeably. I'll talk about scheduled tasks. I'll talk about scripts. I'll talk about automation, automation manager. So if I use those words interchangeably, just think automation. Now, let's break it down for a sec, okay? Because filters, and there, there's no real order here, I just kind of go through and outline what they are, but filters allow you to search for specific groups of devices or other criteria. The benefit, of, the benefit to sorting what customers get which program. This will define the program, right? Who gets what? Notifications. Tickets allow you to take the alerts from in central and standardize into categories within your IT service management platform, something like ServiceNow, or even something like ConnectWise Manage uh, for a PSA. Service templates are the bundles of monitoring that we apply to particular devices with preset thresholds and or self-healing. You don't have to use self-healing, and in, in some respects, you don't want to use self-healing especially if you're in that essentials program. If you're in a starter program and your time and material, dude, you do not want to put automation on devices. And I see this time and time again when I'm visiting MSPs, I'm like, oh, you're automating everything. That's awesome. Great, if you're one of those MSPs that are automating everything, great. But if you have an essentials program and your supportability is time and material, you do not want to cannibalize your revenue by throwing automation at that customer. The other part is if you're doing that, you'll never get them upstream into a fully managed. You don't want to be time and material. Time and material is a necessary evil, right? There's no predictability in time or time and material, not to the customer, not to yourself. However, it is a great entry level program because one, it's, it's a way for you and that customer kind of negotiate, hey, I'm going to charge you five hours a month or you give me a money retainer of $500 and we'll consume from it. It's a good way to start. It's not where you should end up right where you do want to end up is in that fully managed arena where you can fully automate right and optimize custom properties are defined fields that we use in our programs to tag devices within filters we basically create these metadata tags and then we put them on our devices or we put them on our customers so that we can actually group and filter the way we need to so custom properties and filters kind of go hand in hand, they kind of been hooked in together. Asian or scheduled tasks is used to proactive, proactively schedule tasks to standard, standardize the program's offering, okay? For example, you have a fully managed customer or even advanced, and you wanna make sure that they have common off the shelf software. Things like, I don't know, I'll just, because I'm a tech, I'll just say things like Putty, you know, all the browsers, you know, Firefox, Chrome, maybe Opera, Safari. Um, you want to make sure that they have um, maybe Java or Adobe, probably not Java, but um, unless they're in medical, you're always, near, you're never going to get away from Java if it's you're medical. But it's one of those things where there's common off the shelf software you want to make sure that's installed every time. DLC player, right? WinRAR, right? Those kinds of things. It's to your benefit to make sure that those programs are there, right? There is a, a kind of a, a divide between your time and material, but also the customer experience. Apply, okay, this is rules apply what rules. 
Um, this applies, rules apply um, automation, monitoring that pertain to uh, the specific customer's devices, which are set by the rule filter. So again, filters go into rules, automation go into rules, right? Custom properties go into filters, service templates go into rules. I Rules are kind of like the blanket. Scott Parker, a former product manager, former sales engineer I used to work with, used to give this kind of wacky analogy that rules are like a picnic blanket, right? And you put all of the other things like the, the cheese and the wine and the basket and everything else you put on top of it, right? So it is the blanket that houses everything below. Now naming conventions. Filters and custom properties go hand in hand, right? Service templates. These are a group of service configurations that allow you to apply services, threshold, self-healing, and more in bulk. One of the one of the more defining reasons of why you're you choose and central. Notification profiles and PSA ticketing, right? Or ITS service management, especially if you're using something like custom PSA. This allows you to send notifications when services go into certain states of change, a trigger change, right? Scheduled task profiles, also known as automation. A notification profile contains who to notify and when, and it's linked to a trigger or multiple triggers. Okay. Rules. Rules are used to apply devices, configurations, notification triggers, and monitoring templates. Right. Rules kind of take all of it together. Now let's talk a little bit of relationship. We've got about two or three more slides, and we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes. So think of it like this, right? You've got the rule, right? Which encompasses almost everything. But filters define the rule or the criteria of the rule, right? It tells you what devices, Hyper-V servers, right? VMware, uh, DC1 versus DC2, right? Custom properties interact with filters to really define, hey, this is patch management on a Monday or on a Friday. Okay. Those get propagated out to customers and sites based on device configurations, things like EDR, patch, config changes. You have things like scheduled task profiles. This is where scripting and automation play. This is why you use you know, automation scripting and scheduled task profiles kind of interchangeably. Then you have things like monitoring and notifications. From there, you have the Ancentral services. Okay? And even below those services, there are called service items. I didn't want to include that, but there are. Those are the individual monitors within that service. And from here, you have things like notification triggers, the notification profile, notification PSA and tickets right now again if you were to break in central down this may seem very complex but there are five aspects that you're going to focus on when building programs okay now let's do an example of filters because filters are really the unsung hero of N central rules do all the heavy lifting but is the filter that kind of defines the criteria right now, when you create a filter, for example, a change is done to a device configuration, right? Or a custom property even. And Central reviews if any filter assignments are changed, or changes. Let me just back this up because I hate typos. It just drives me nuts. So I'm gonna change. There we go, let's go back to full screen. Are filters added, removed, or both? If they were removed, and Central sees what rules have uh, have to be removed and remove the, removes the device configuration information, rule assignment, and template assignment. Note that it does not remove services applied by templates. Monitoring is sticky. You have to tell monitoring to remove. It doesn't, doesn't remove because you've, you've asked the filter to change something. I do a whole boot camp on just monitoring. So. It, there's a lot of complexity in just monitoring. Um, now, when it gets added, and Central sees what rules have to be added, and adds the configuration items, rules, assignment, template, assignment, etc. 
let me just pull up and central here really quick. First and foremost, I want to come down to my working lab, which is right here. But I'm also going to open up another tab. There's two areas I want to kind of focus on in my, my lab environment. Okay. So I'm going to come down here. Now, there's no devices, there's nothing here, but I want to kind of show you what in central would look like from a blank slate, right? So let's pretend under monitoring, service templates, right? This is basically what we throw at you, right? It doesn't have to be, right? So we could even go ahead and delete all of these if we wanted to. I don't recommend it unless you have a very, very deep knowledge of how Central works. But this is where, again, I have put together the fully managed workstation, the essential server, right? It could be a fully managed server, but you can define your service templates to be these bundles of what exactly you need them to be. Okay? So again, service templates. Then we have rules. Now, I've gone ahead and deleted all my rules. Right, because this is effectively where I want to create rules that are going to assign um, the certain aspects of my program to those devices. Right. So again, if I come back to my slides, let me go back to something like security services. Maybe I want to start applying things like EDR, patch management, you know, DNS filtering. Maybe I've got a dark web monitoring service. Not that Enable does, but there are tools out there that do that. Maybe you want to apply that um, that agent to you know, your fully managed customers, right? So that is where you set up the criteria within the rule to be able to do that. Let's get into filters. Now, I can't delete, you can't delete filters in Central. It's not like you can select all, and you can delete the, the customized ones that, that I've built, but you would also um, leave all of our defaults in here. But this is where we can come in and click add. Like this is test. And we're going to use Adobe as the example here. I can go to application. I can see things like application name. And here, let me just go into add remove programs. Pretty confident I've got Adobe installed. So when I'm looking here, I want to look at you know, something like Adobe Acrobat, right? So if I type in equal to, I can type in Adobe Acrobat, something like that. Preview. Are there any devices with Adobe installed? Now this is a lab, so there's not a whole lot in there. Um, but I can also see what is not. So interchangeably, I can see what is there, and I can also see what is not there, right? And that's important because if you understand what filters can do within a rule, you can find things or find things that aren't there, right? Based on your criteria, something like Adobe, or maybe it's something like Silence. And Silence has about four or five different names that you can look for, but I'll just call this Silence as an example. And then you can see what exactly is missing. Based on this filter, I could use this in a scheduled task, right? Say this is now Silence. And what I can do is now save that. I can come into my scheduled task. I can create a profile that says, I'm going to install in Silence to any device that is missing, right? So install Silence. Spell right. I'm going to add an automation policy. Now, I don't have Silence as a example here, but I'll just use that as an example. But say this is going to install something like EDR, right? I can make that recur because I know my monitor is going to check to see as part of my, my automation, there is a conditional. Is EDR there, right? So is Sentinel-1 there or is Silence there? If it is not, then what I'm going to do is download, I'm going to install, et cetera, right? And I can do that check. I do not recommend every five minutes. Say I'm gonna do that check every, I'll do hourly, starting at you know, something like 8 a.m. Okay. 
I don't need notifications on that. And then I would call this install Scilab. Okay, save that. And then I now have a scheduled task to install Scilab. Now, this is where I also want to maybe create notifications, right? So if I go into notifications, I want, you know, Scilab. This is where I would come in and I would map this to my ticket and recipient. <clears throat> I'm just going to use my name, for example. Right? Save and continue, add, and then from here, I'm going to go in here and say, Silence notifications on failed. So if I'm monitoring Silence, I have to obviously create the monitor or find one. Um, I built one a long time ago. I don't know where it is right now, but if I had that monitoring and it went into a failed state, I'd want to obviously find my monitoring for silence and obviously add that to my AV or my silence program. Okay. Now that is how it looks in five minutes or less, but let's get into the details, right? So first and first things first, let's start with service templates. Okay. And I'm going to go into my fully managed workstation. Okay. So I've got the agent status. I'm monitoring AV. Again, you, you probably have Sentinel one, but if you don't, maybe you are using silence, or maybe you are using some kind of like Sophos or, or trend micro or some other, you know, kind of third party outside of what enable offers. Well, then you want to use your AV status. And, but you're offering DNS filtering, right? You're maybe offering Sentinel one, right? You're monitoring for ethernet errors. You're monitoring the patch status, right? System replacement, system warranty. And this is the tip of the tip of the iceberg. I also do a boot camp on uh, what is called 15 things you can automate, right? That, those are things that you can include in the, the monitoring as well, right? So 15 things, and I also did another bootcamp called 15 more things, right? So there's literally 30 things that you can add in to your program. And then from there, once I've created my fully managed workstation, I can also create something like my fully managed laptop as well. So I would come in, I would click add, I'd call this uh, two dot uh, fully managed laptop. And again, the reason being is workstations are typically more on-premise, they're in the office, whereas laptops are a little more mobile. So maybe you're going to add in something like public IP. This is where I need to go back up to this lab. So let me come back to here. Monitoring service templates, click add again. Managed laptop like that. Again, it is device class specific, so you do have to create one for laptops and for workstation and for servers. But this is where I can go, you know, agent status, add, save. I'm going to add in something like public IP. That way I can tell where the device is. Okay, I'm going to choose the second one here. You too. And the reason being is there's a lot more detail in the thresholds. I can see not only IP address, but I get the X and Y values of the latitude and longitude of the device in terms of coordinates, the ISP name, hosting. There's a lot of other stuff in here. So add that in. Okay. I can add in something to play EDR. If they're fully managed with you, the MSP, they're probably using your offering for, for AV, DNS. Okay. And well, let's see here. Um, go BitLocker. Every laptop should have BitLocker installed. So I'm going to add in my BitLocker monitoring. C drive. And then I can add in more and more and more as part of my fully managed offering. Save. Okay. 
Now let's come back here. So I've created my fully managed uh, laptop, server, essential server. Like for essentials, I'll, I'll keep it light. I'll keep it something like EDR. But maybe I'm also going to monitor uh, CPU. <clears throat> Pardon me, uh, CPU, memory, and disk. Everything else is going to be uh, time and material, right? That customer is going to call me. They're going to tell me there's a problem, but I'm proactively going to monitor these things. For EDR, for you know the agent, um, but I also want to be able to report on some things as well. What's going on with patch? Okay, so that's your essential server. Save that. But you could have a fully managed server as well. So let's say three fully managed server. Okay, let's drop this down to server. And then I can add in things like agent, DNS, ER, BitLocker, I haven't set that one up for my servers, but I would probably want to add in, you know, something like BitLocker as well. Now, that being said, the list goes on and on. You want to take what you're on the hook for, for that fully managed server, and say it's Exchange, or it's got SQL. Let's go SQL, right? Well, maybe you want to monitor the database information or, you know, memory, SQL memory, or buffer status, or transa transaction information. So you can add in all of those proactive monitors into your fully managed service because you know it's got SQL, right? Or it's got Exchange, or it's got you know certain applications that you want to proactively monitor. That's exactly how you create these bundles. And it doesn't have to be you know, that simple either. You could have fully managed server, you know, Windows monitoring, call it Windows monitoring but then you could also create another one for you know applications like exchange right so then you would add in things like exchange now there's different types let's choose 2016 here and then you would add something like that in so creating these bundles of monitoring is super important especially in your fully managed programs Whereas when you do your essential, right, if I come back to here, your monitoring services are like, you're gonna do patch, AV, disk, memory, CPU. You're gonna keep it pretty light. Network device monitoring and management. Again, you can use Ncentral for their firewall or their switching, right? Monitor the VPN. Routine server and desktop maintenance. This is where you could apply, you know, policies to clean up the device or keep them healthy. Key application and maintenance, right? So you can go in and if they have something like SQL or Exchange, you can create like an IT service around, you know, quarterly optimization of that. Device optimization, right? We call it hardening, right? They're interchangeable. You're going to make them run better by hardening. Um, you know, for example, when you go into something like MS config, you can obviously come in and start meddling with some of this information, but there's startup items that you can turn on or off, right? Services that you can turn on or off that they're never going to use. So again, you're going to optimize the operating system for that customer so that the endpoints are going to be running in an optimal state okay so really that is what you're going to do when it comes to <clears throat> pardon me when it comes to
creating your service templates. Now, what about creating programs as a whole? So again, I talked about you know, the service bundles, right? The monitoring, because to me, everything starts with monitoring. It's what gives you visibility into what problems could occur, right? Disk is full. Uh, server is sitting at 99% CPU or memory, right? It's an RDS server, right? It'll drop down to 12%, it'll increase to 99, but you need to be on in the now because if it's sitting at 99% for over 30 minutes, well, there could be a problem, right? So that is, those are the bundles that you're going to create. Now, one thing that I do is when I do onboardings, here, I'm just gonna collapse everything here. If I go into customers, right? So I'm gonna create programs. So add, we have something like, this is what I used to do. If they were fully managed, I would put a prefix at the beginning, and them, and then we give the customer name. Acme Inc. Here, let me just fix that. Acme Incorporated, okay? Then I would include an external ID. So let's just call this fully managed, right? Now, the good news is, is that we can use this metadata tag as fully managed for FM, save, within the filter. So if I go into configuration filters, I can add, let's go fully managed. Here I can find, let me make sure I can find it here. It is an organization. There it is. External ID one or two, right? So equal to, if I type in fully managed and I preview this. Well, that didn't work. Let me try that again. So if I go to customers, FM Acme, Internal ID optional. Did I spell that right? Let me try it again. I did not spell that right. That's why. Fully managed. Okay. Copy and paste that and save it. Let me just try that. Save. Go into the filter. Don't embarrass me now. Okay. So again, I'll just call this fully managed. This is where we go into org. Let's see if I can preview that. Well, let's do contains. Let's see what that works. Hmm. Let me test one other thing here. Well, this isn't supposed to happen. So give me one sec here. Let's go into here. So it's, There's other ways to do it as well. I wanted to show you both here. But um, Andrew was saying, you don't have any devices in the customer. That shouldn't matter. What I'm really trying to do, actually that does matter in the, in the preview, sorry. Um, but I wanted to show you one thing here. Let me just go into filters again. Add. So if I go to the org, and I go to customer ID two equal to, again, fully managed. What this will do is show devices under that. Let me actually just build it on under my working lab. 
I try to keep this boot camp separate. So let me just build it in here. So if I go into uh, administration, go into customers, I'll tray, turn this into tray research fully managed. That. Save, now I'll filter. org equal to and let's see if this works that's not what i'm expecting now there is another way i don't know why this isn't working but it's not um and i'm probably missing something because it's nine o'clock in the morning i've had uh, a half a cup of coffee um, either way, I'll probably figure it out when we go on break in about five minutes. Now, that being said, there's also custom properties, right? So you can do what are called uh, custom org properties. So you can add by customer. And this is where you can use something like a text type. And we'll go here like fully managed. And also, you know, I'll choose where are you here? Do, do, do. Let's go into Company Corp. Okay. Now I'll choose that as fully managed and I'll put, just put here FM. Now, if I do a filter on that, providing that I did not mess that up, I go into Fully managed, equal to, and I, I type FM, it should show me finally. So that part works. <laughs> okay, so um, that being said, this is a great way to group your programs. This is really kind of step one, because you kind of want to create metadata tags that tell you what customers fall into what buckets. Again. Advanced or you know essential, right? So maybe instead of creating a tag called FM, we're going to call this as ESS or ADB for advanced. But again, you already have your programs outlined, so you might be calling them something completely different than what I have, and that's fine. But you create your and let me ask you, how many program offerings do you have, Andrew? Or for the rest of you as well, please answer if you can. Uh, Zach or Mike, just let me know. You have one program, and is it just fully managed? Okay, good, good. That's awesome. What about the rest of you? <clears throat> Pardon me. Okay, so Mike, think of it like this. Your MSP, say you're just the tech, all right? For example, you, your business that you're working for, they're salespeople going out and trying to sell IT services. Typically, those are programs, right? Program offerings that you're selling. So it's one of those things where we're trying to map that, that sales strategy into the technology. Okay. Um, so fully managed, co-managed, SOC services, perfect. And that's fine. Um, Mike, at the same point, what you're going to be able to do is work with either your business owner, your sales team, what have you, in terms of mapping what the, your MSP is doing into the technology. And that's the reason why I built this, because as a tech, there's always a disconnect. Hey, you're fixing devices, right? Oh, yeah. So you have three different services. Okay, perfect. So the MSP I came from had three different service offerings. Okay, perfect. We call them program offerings, service offerings. You can interchange the words all you want. Now, Mike does have a, a really, really great question, and I want to address it. His question is, my big question is, we've had Enable since 2015. 
well, with many text fingers in the mix. They've made rules, templates, tasks. How do I clean it up without breaking everything? My patch management is a mess um, as a starting point. I'm very frustrated to trying to uh, gain control. I know it will be amazing once I have it under control. So, and Mike goes on to say, perfect. I'd love to get yours as, um, or get mine uh, as organized as yours. So let me show you something. So first things first, you should have two end central servers. One is your production server and the other one should be an NFR. So let me, I can't go on VPN right now, but I do have an NFR server. So basically it's like just a, it comes with 10 licenses. I get to mess around with it and break things and no big deal. I can restore it if I screw something up, but let's just pretend this is my NFR, right? What I typically go and do is I come in and because I know how to kind of architect and central from the kind of ground up, right? So I'll go into things like patch management, right? There's nothing here. There's no devices. You need, you need to add at least one device, but this is where you go into rules. You kind of get rid of all the rules that don't apply to you, like SQL or SPS or whatever. You just get rid of all the garbage. And basically what you're going to do is start from scratch. So you come in and you know, do something like delete. Now notifications. Again, I delete the notifications, right? Filters. Unfortunately, you can't delete filters, like at least the stock filters in Central. So if I come in here, you're going to see all of the other filters I can delete. These are all my customized filters, the, the, the little ones here, the, the ones that I've customized. So you can delete some things. But from there, that is where I'll start creating my filters, my custom properties, and et cetera, right? Things like scheduled tasks, right? You know, this is where I'll create my scheduled, ta scheduled tasks for like silence is my example earlier, right? Or common off the shelf software that I want to get installed every single time I onboard an endpoint. So this is where you start. And if you need an NFR, Mike, I do recommend, or anybody on this call, if you don't have an NFR server, which is a non for resell, it's a non-production server, um, 10 licenses. And what you're gonna be able to do is just go to your PSM um, and request it. Tell them that uh, you were talking to Jason, you were on one of his boot camps, and he mentioned that you need an NFR because you're you know, going through some current pains and you wanna re-architect some things. And that is where you start. Now, you have to understand is that you've been using in Central almost 10 years. So there's been a lot of configuration, a lot of love put into your in Central server. So do things methodically. Um, I would start with one, your biggest pain, which is patch management. Try re-architecting patch management the way you want it, the way you need it, Mike, and start there. And then from there, maybe start iterating into programs or service offerings or whatever we want to call it. So, and that's where you kind of start. Um, and I've done this and it, I've done it over the course of basically when I worked for the really, really big MSP, it took me probably about a month because I had to document everything as well. Because when I re-architected everything, I had to kind of train everybody on how to, you know, onboard a customer. If they fell into the service offering for fully managed, they would get into the FM program and they'd have to rename things and just a start. So they would get all the rules and, you know, everything the, the way they're supposed to. So that is how it starts. It starts with your NFR. I hope that answers your question, Mike. Obviously, it kind of doesn't really kind of get into the, the depth of, of, you know, why your patch is a mess, but obviously it's a good starting point, right? And that's where I would start. Same thing with notifications. Notifications and in Central, we kind of, here, let me just go into my working lab here. No, not that one. I'm going to here. I come into notifications, you can see that we throw tons of notifications at you, right? You don't have to. You know exactly what you want to be notified on. And if you don't, this is a really great exercise to understand what you want to be notified on, right? Because then you have hooks into your PSA. For example, say you're using ConnectWise Manage, like, like I am in this particular example. Well, I have ticketing. What this is is a mapping exercise from notifications into ConnectWise. It's an integration point. 
So I'm going to take those notifications and maneuver them over into ConnectWise Manage Ticketing. And then from there, you know, I can create a, you know, so for example, I'm going to say priority one, right? Server now, right? And then from there, I want it to go to a particular service board. Now I've got several here, so I'm just going to call it um, integration, right? You're going to do your mapping the way you need to, and then you're going to associate it to something like agent down or server down. Like you can rename these any which way you want. This is important because you can use our default as agent probe failure, right? Well, that's pretty generic. If you rename it or recustomize it and give it the right name, like server is down, well, you have a lot more information to go on off the hop. So th that's why this particular boot, I created this bootcamp because it's, you don't have to use the stock stuff that we're throwing at you. You can enhance it and make it better as long as you know how to put the pieces together. And again, those pieces, just to kind of reiterate, are right here, rules, tickets, service templates, custom properties, filters, automation, right? No, automation being self, uh, scheduled tasks. So it's really important if you know these pieces, you can really do a really amazing job in terms of getting dialed in within Central, right? That is the difference between and Central and a lot of the other RMMs, especially the cloud ones. They kind of give you a default standard because they need to be able to scale, right? Like they're cloud services, so it's they they scale. But because in Central, you know, from you know back in the day, was architected as a a Linux, you know, customized web server, there's so much customization you can do. And again, talking about this, that complexity can kill you. That is your self-inflicted wound. So over 15 years, Mike, you've had all this customization. It's grown and it's gotten messy, right? And you're probably feeling it like, why aren't these endpoints patching? I know Enable can patch these devices, but why aren't they patching? Well, misconfigurations, complexity, right? Maybe you had one tech go in there and try to re-architect everything under customers. So I'd also urge you to come to my patch management bootcamp because I tell you how to keep yourself on the rails around patch, or at least download my videos for, for patch management. So, and there's reasons to get dialed in. There's no reason to use kind of our default standard. There has to be a default in Central. So we throw you one. But that doesn't necessarily going to scale. If you're a, if you're a small shop with a thousand devices, well, our defaults are probably going to work for you. If you're ten thousand devices, I can tell you, it does not work for you. You have to re-architect and central patch management. The reason being is the monitoring is in a default state where it's just it's overly noisy for ten thousand devices. It doesn't dial into where the problems are. It gives you false positives. And it's not to say that's bad when you're at a thousand. You need to know where your failures are because, hey, you've got the time and resources to kind of troubleshoot that. Whereas if you're the guy running 10,000 devices and you've got 20 techs, 30 techs, or probably more when you're at that size, but it's one of those things that you need to be super, like laser focused on monitoring and, and the management piece of it. Anyways, not to belabor the point, it's just a really important piece and that is why I, I, I wanted to create this bootcamp because you can get really dialed in for patch, for monitoring, for filtering, for your service offerings, right? Or programs as I call it. That's why uh, uh, I think we were confusing things a little bit earlier. I call them programs because, hey, I've been doing this a long time and back in the day it was called programs. They're now called service offerings, yes. Okay, so let's go back to well, it's this demo, number two, but there might be a really good segue into things like notifications, okay? So in your NFR, what I would recommend, if I can find, I won't go into that one, let's go into this one, because I think I've already done it. If I go into monitoring uh, notifications, clean slate. Now, on your atypical MSP, I'm looking after everything. Windows, Macs, Linux, I'm looking after um, server, you know, workstations, you know, firewalls, switching, 
batteries, you name it, I need to look after it. And Central is my de facto monitoring tool for everything. Maybe you've got Avic, maybe you've got some other stuff. But if you're if you don't, then you need to make sure that you're again dialed in. How do you do that with notifications? Because as long as you've got the monitoring and the insights mapped, because monitoring is everything. That's why I do two two different types of monitoring boot camps. One is on SNMP, which is for everything else, and then I do a monitoring boot camp around you know creating templates and dialing them in and you know doing self healing and 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 doing scheduled tasks, right? So for again, server is down. Well, what, how does a server actually go down? Uh, typically, you know, power interruption, OS corruption, out of space, you know, the, the several reasons why servers just don't work anymore, right? Well, from there, I want to be able to add that into my ticketing solution, like ConnectWise is my example. So what I'm going to do here is leave this blank for now. Okay, server is down. I'm going to say save and continue. Then I'm going to add in a server 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 is down notifications. Server is is down. Okay, failed. Now I am going to return to normal. What this does is that when the server comes back, monitoring goes back to green. I can then do an auto close action. This is API type of communication. So and server goes. Oh hey, the server's back up. I'm going to tell ConnectWise manager to go close that ticket. I'll show you that in a moment. Okay. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do that on something like the agent status. You can do it on probe as well. I don't. I only use agents for server is down. Um, ping is great. Tells you kind of latency, real time, up and down. And that's great. But if the agent goes down, that is kind of the, the record of truth. If the server, if the agent's not working on that server, I've got I've got problems, right? So I use agent status. And then I'll apply it to my rule. Now I've got a server rule already built in, so I'll just use that. And then I click save. Now let's go into PSA. Now I don't have a PSA hooked into this particular um, service org, so I'm going to go back up to my actual working lab. Is if I come into notifications, and I already have servers down here, so I do that one all the time. Uh, let's use a different one because that's a test thing I'm doing. Uh, let's go into server. P1 server is down, this one. Okay. So I'll map that to something like, uh, where are you here? I didn't save it. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go into PSA integration and ticketing. And I'll call this P1. P1, P, oh my gosh, P1, there we go. Server down. And map it to your service board. I'll use this. I'll use this as opened. Source is going to be in central. Priority one. And then I do the mapping right here. So if I go to where are you here? Done. Now, again, because when that server goes back up, I'll auto close. Change this ticket status to closed when it is open. Okay. Ticket status will only be set on a repeat failure if the um, current status is selected below. So if the ticket is open, right? Server's gone down, ticket's open. I'm going to actually set it to close when it repeats within, say, 48 hour period or maybe 24. You can set that to whatever you want. Same thing when updating the ticket. I'm going to change that to closed on open, right? So you've got repeat failures down here and then updating the ticket dynamically. So the ticketing automation. Again, on that P1 server is down notification. Again, completely customized. That is how important notifications and monitoring work in the central. We expose it all to you. Again, we give you a default and it's a good default. But if you want to enhance your service offerings, you can dial this in even further. You can even include time entries if you wanted to. Most people don't do this type of stuff, but you can. Okay, so really important way 
to be able to do your notifications, right? Again, if I come back down to here, am I, nope. Do not want to break my lab. So I'm going to go back down to this. But I can add in something like disk. Disk is full. Again, I've, I've actually included, so if you go into here, and I go into notifications, where are you here? Configuration, monitoring notifications. So if we go to disk, or disk is somewhere in here. Is that hardware? Let me look. No, that's on smart. But anyways, we got when it, we have a, a disk is full kind of notification uh, profile in here. But if I wanted to, where are we here? Do this one, disk is full, single device, single service. So basically one device has now got a disk is full alert, right? You can do others like, hey, I've got one device with multiple like disk and CPU are now failed. Now oh, that's great, but I'm just gonna use this as my example. I'm going to add this into my P1, maybe something like that. Choose that. Save. Add. We'll call it this is full again. Turn to normal. I'll go in and find the monitoring for disk. Where are you here, disk? Now I'm going to add that probably into servers, but I can do this for workstations and laptops. You define how you're getting alerts out of Uncentral as opposed to allowing an enable to tell you, right? So I can do workstations, I can do laptops somewhere in here, or you laptops, and I can do servers. These three rules, right? Now, we haven't really even talked about rules yet because I save that to the end because it's the one that kind of puts it all together. So just know with notifications, you can enhance your notifications as well, right? Really, really important. And I, I completely just, I delete everything because I already know what I want out of my tickets. And you probably already do too, but why leave all of those other defaults just kind of sitting there? Well, maybe you might use it for another day, okay? Well, maybe you're not mapping server hardware, or maybe you're not mapping switch and router performance. So you can leave it there if you want to. I don't. I find that if I missed an alert, like customer calls and says, hey, we got an APC battery, and you guys didn't even know it was down, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's a miss. I'm not monitoring it, so I'm not going to get a notification on it either. But now I got to create monitoring. Now I got to create a notification. Now I got to create a ticket recipient, right? So this exercise is super important to your your continuous improvement. Anyways, I've, I'm sure I've talked that to, to death at this point. Let me just have a quick sip of coffee. Okay, so notifications. Any questions on notifications? It's a huge piece, right? It really comes to monitoring. The notification piece is really simple, right? It's just a mapping exercise. This is all this is. I'm creating a profile as an ad, call it whatever you want. Who's your recipient? Like, do you want to send it to a person or do you want to send it to, here, let me just do it because you're not even seeing it here. If I go into administration, PSA integration, ticketing, let me actually save this. E1 example, right? I'm just going to choose a few things here. Boom. Save. Okay. Now, when I go to my notification, say whatever I want, I can now choose that P1 example ticketing recipient and that's the life cycle so now it well i have to add in the trigger and everything else so let's do disk again disk 
find disk. Okay, done. So I've now taken the monitoring for disk. I now have a notification profile for disk and it is now mapped to my PSA ticketing. Those three things. Okay, Andrew. Do you recommend one notification per monitoring item or should we bundle multiple? Okay, so that is also a really great question because I'm not a huge fan on the bundles. I like granularity. I like being, if I'm going to customize something, I wanna be able to see it. It's like, it's trying to build configurations under your customer. Sure, you can do it, but it's the, what's the right word? Um, antithesis, I think, I can't say it right, but it's, it's not conducive to being able to, to manage and central the way you need to. You want to be able to have ease of use and you want to be able to expose things at a level that you can actually get at it and see it. If you start nesting things, you don't really get the ability, Andrew. So I'm not a big, like we all, we do do it. So if you come in, or where is it? If I go into, not that one, I want to go into notifications here. In here, if I go into, what's a good one? That's not nested. There are some here that have lots. So this one? No. You'd have to go into them and actually find them, but there are some some of them in here, four or five nested um, triggers under them, right? And I don't like that personally. I like to expose everything chronologically so I can see it. I can get at it, I can tweak it. If it's nested, can't really do that, right? So I do recommend it. I do, at the very most, I re, re, uh, recommend re-architecting your notifications the way you need to, Andrew. So um, I'll leave it to you, you know, like you can nest them and if it's easier, great. But to be honest with you, I like exposing it, okay? My SQL notification has one trigger, but like 12 rules under that. Uh, sorry, I can't read all everything here uh, under that trigger. Yeah, and that's a really good example as well. One trigger, but 12 rules. Well, that's fine because you don't want to, you, you want to make ease of use, but you don't want to do dip, duplication for the sake of duplication either, right? So would you create one for workstation? Would you want to create one for laptop and one, one for server? No, I would probably just encompass the, the three device classes as the rules, right? So, um, okay, so moving on. So we got, we're about uh, 20 minutes to go. So let me get into, da, da, da. where are we here? Service templates, let's get into schedule tasks. Now, let me collapse this, collapse this, and let's talk about This, okay, these are scheduled tasks and we have scheduled task profiles. Okay, so what is the difference? Now, when you come into InCentral and wanna run a scheduled task, okay, it's run a script, run an automation policy, run a max script, run a discovery. These are called scheduled task limitations, right? Sorry, that one's not, but this one is. So you can see at the top, schedule task limitation, I create, run a script, schedule task limitation. If I want to run a backup, schedule task limitation. If I want to file transfer, schedule task, okay, you get the point. Anyways, this is a, a limitation of scheduled tasks. It's limited. And you're like, well, how? First and foremost, if I come in to do this file transfer task, and I choose a repository item, so a Mac installer, okay? I'm gonna put this on C colon backslash temp, okay, something like that. I'm gonna choose my filter, right? So say I'm gonna do this for all workstations. Let's say all servers, I'm already here. I'm gonna do this for all servers. Schedule um, in an hour. So let's say in 20 minutes, 10 a.m. I'm gonna send that executable over to all of my servers at SQL and Perfect. Well, great if you're doing something like that. 
at one time today. Now, what happens is a lot of people do recurring jobs. I want this to happen. I maybe mean, schedule file or file transfer task isn't a great, great example, but I want to run a script. I'm going to schedule that recurring. I'm going to do it on a target, like again, something like servers. And I'm going to, what, what script am I going to run here? Run spybot search and destroy. Okay, cool. So I'm going to do that recurring, um, let's see here, hourly, starting at, again, 10. Well, because you're doing this as a one-time job, but in a recurring fashion, you're targeting all of the Windows servers for today. Not tomorrow, not next week, not three months from now. It's about all of the servers that are today. And most people don't understand that. You're setting up this recurring job. You would think, well, I'm choosing a filter called servers-windows. Okay, but you're doing an on-demand script task based on your servers today. So when you onboard a customer next week, next month, you do not get this automation. Now, if you want that to happen, this is where we use scheduled task profiles. This is stuff that you can template within a filter and a rule to make sure that you're getting it or your servers are going to get it every single time. So say I'm going to run, I don't want to say run spybot. That's a really crappy example here. Let me go with scripting. I'll find something useful, useful here. Mm -mm -mm. I'm just going to use flush DNS, whatever. So I'm going to flush DNS once a day, every day. Okay. I'm going to make that as a recurring job. Again, customized hourly. And I'll say repeat every four hours starting at, you know, something like 10. Okay. So again, recurring job. I'm going to call this flush DNS. No notifications, I don't care about. I don't need it to be notified on it, right? I'm going to use the agent to do the work, right? Save. I'm going to call this flush DNS. Save. Now, I have a scheduled task that's recurring every four hours. Doesn't, doesn't, but the, this particular scheduled task doesn't know what devices get it, what servers, what workstations, whatever. It's kind of a dummy uh, automation that is just out there waiting for you to tell it to get applied correctly. That is where we come into monitoring and rules. Now, let me come go back because I want to show you. I have like one called special automation. This is where I can now go all of my workstations and laptops or all of my customers that are fully managed. Okay, I'm going to add in a scheduled task profile called, where are you here? Flush DNS. So anytime I onboard a new customer that is a workstation or a laptop, they're always going to get my special automation because it's proactive. It's, they're paying for it. It's to my benefit as an MSP to make sure that I'm doing these proactive things to reduce support calls and everything else, because I'm not doing time and material. I'm factoring in 20 hours per fully managed customer or something like that. It's probably less than that, but um, it's one of those things that that's where this comes in, right? Because you're able to group things the way you need to using the filter, using the scheduled task, and using the customer feature to be able to apply it the way you need to. Okay. Now, you might even have a customized filter where it is now, I don't think I have saved it, but if I had fully managed in here, I don't. So if I had fully managed devices, it would be any of my customers that have that FM tag or fully managed tag that we were talking about you know, 20, 30 minutes ago. So 
I can create that customized filter based on custom properties or that external ID, be able to group it the way I want to, and then be able to apply <clears throat> my automation automatically to them because, hey, they're just fully managed. That is the power of rules. Rules are set it and forget it. And you can tweak rules as you go. You can change the filter or what have you. But for the most part, you set it, you set it up, and as long as they fall, they fall into that right criteria, they're going to get what you needed to every time. Now, most people do not understand schedule task limitations versus the schedule task profile. Now, I would tell you honestly that scheduled task profiles are probably one of the most underutilized features in N Central. And if you understand the power and what you can do with this, it's pretty freaking amazing. So let me give you another example. Because people, people ask me all the time, is there an API where I can just run a script? Well, today, no, there's not. However, you can trick in central into doing exactly that. So if I come into where are my rules? Do 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 is it proactive? I set this up before. No. So basically, how it works is that if you go into custom properties. A CP, a custom property drop down of yes or no, right? Everything is set to none. But if I go into a rule and filter differently on week one, well, week one might trigger a whole different filter to get a whole other group of devices that fall under week, week one. And then that filter and automation and scheduled task and, and the customer and the fully man, it all happens all at the same time. So you can trigger things automatically, just like clicking on or you know scripting out a, a run script API. You can do much of the exact same thing using custom properties. There's a lot of power to custom properties and rules. Okay, so I wanted to touch on that as well. Any questions so far on anything that I've covered? Filters, service templates, notification profiles and scheduled task profiles. I'll just leave that open for about uh, 20 seconds because I'm gonna have another sip of coffee. Okay, now, rules. This is where you can do some cool stuff, right? And I think I've already touched on it, but I'm just going to kind of um, expand a little bit, is that you can see in here, I don't have any service program specific rules, right? But if I come into here, what I can do is go into rules, and then I can do my programs, or my, again, Mike earlier called them service offerings. So again, I can do a service offering, right? So let's say this is uh, advanced. Service. And then from there, what I can do is add in my filter. So say I have an advanced service offerings filter for those customers that are under that bundle. Then I can add in the necessary automation. I can add in the, the necessary monitoring. Now, again, I, I'm, I'm simplifying because we, we spoke about nesting things. When it comes to scheduled tasks, I'll create uh, rules for scheduled tasks. I'll create um, rules for maintenance windows. I'll okay, create specific rules for different types of things that I'm doing. I don't like nesting too much all at once into one single rule. Mind you, you can, right? We were talking about patch management at the customer level. You, sure, you can nest patch at the customer level. <clears throat> Pardon me, I'm fighting a cold here. Um, but you want to uh, lean to the side of simplicity, right? So don't try to bundle too much into one single rule, right? If it's a monitoring rule, like say this is an event service offering monitoring, right? Then just focus on your monitoring, right? 
Right? Customers, select them all. Devices target. Done. Okay, advanced service offering, monitoring. Now we can do advanced services offering automation. You know, select your proper filter, fil filter on all of your automation. Again, my one example here, and then choose your customer, right? That's it. So you can really define exactly who gets what and when every single time. And most people don't understand that because like Mike was talking about earlier, been using Central for since 2015. Right, eight years. A lot of hands get in there. But what Mike's going to do is now re-architect his NFR server as an example test bed, and then be able to take that information and put it right into production. That is the proper way, you know, dev test and then prod. Right? I think we all know that. So I won't have to expand too much on best practices, but that is how you're going to do it. And again, this is where we can come into, you know fully managed server and then we can go into you know active automation something like that so again choose your filter servers or fully managed servers you choose your fully managed customers right again even the filter can do that for you and you can set this to this because it really depends on how you're onboarding your customers. There's a lot of factors that go into that, right? And then obviously adding in your proactive automation. Okay, so it's that simple, right? So you can really build out your offerings as your standard within your rules, right? And this gives you much more flexibility and granularity. It's really important. If you undergo this exercise, it will pay dividends because you're going to be operationally in tune, right? Or dialed in, I guess is the right word. And if it doesn't work for you, then you iterate. Because you, again, you're gonna miss something. Not everything's gonna be perfect day one. You might miss something, right? But look to what you have today. Look to your service templates, right? Is there something that in your Windows workstation that you absolutely need? Yeah, I need some. I got a lot of customers with platter drives, so I need smart status. Okay, we'll add it in. So don't take what you're doing today, but improve on it in what I would call the kind of my modern standard. Okay. Anyways, that's it. That's the boot camp. Um, one thing in terms of a review. Okay, building programs in and central. Filters and custom properties will provide you the granularity to create programs or service offerings uh, that are specific to the service delivery of your MSP, right? I think it was Andrew said, we have one, one service offering, fully managed, that is it. I can tell you, if I was Andrew, I would be super dialed in if I only had one service offering. Now, that is also very rare because in most cases, especially if you're doing co-managed, you're doing at least fully managed and co-managed, right? But if you're co-managing in terms of a fully managed offering, hey, that's cool too. Rules and in central will template and govern what is applied to your customers and end users or their devices. Monitoring templates should be adjusted to match your service level agreements and SLOs. And I also, as somebody who's done this exercise, expose your service level or at least objectives to your customers in your msa your master services agreement not all msps even have an msa by the way they're still kind of they're going out there with a contract sign the contract and they're good to go no formalized legal document automation should be applied to only proactive and fully managed customers do not apply automation or anything proactive to you know essential unless it is a part of the deal right i'm going to fully automate your workstations and laptops but you're still time and material so be careful of that one how do you prioritize your best customers above everyone else now 
we've got a little, we've got 30 minutes, so you know, I'm not trying to get rid of you. One thing I did at that large MSP is I realized we had some behemoth customers. I'm talking like 5,000 plus devices, right? And I realized that that those customers were going into the same queue as the people who were paying me $300 money retainer. So I knew I had a, you know, a problem right then and there, especially when that large customer would be like, yeah, I was just on hold for like 35 minutes. Like, why are you guys, are you guys so busy? Well, no, you're actually paying me, you know, $24,000 a month. Do I really want to put them in the same queue as the guy who's doing, paying me 300 because he doesn't find, he doesn't understand the value of my, my services, but he wants to try me out. Well, no, I'm going to give that large customer who's paying me 24 grand a month white glove service so keep in mind that what we're trying to accomplish here is that white glove service within and central now to parlay that i created a whole other queue system different phone numbers unified voice a whole bunch of other stuff that that really kind of changed how we did business um but you can't always do that day one right so sorry I hit my mic um but it's one of those things that Focus on what white glove is because you do have large customers. I know you do, right? It may not be 24 grand a month, but maybe you have a five seater that's paying you six grand. That's maybe your number one customer. Differentiate, okay? Build programs or service offerings in the central successfully by developing scenarios in an NFR, okay? Dev test. Make standardization the premise for everything, right? Because say, for example, you did miss something or there's something like a new automation that comes out. Well, that's where you want to add that in. Reiterate, in, uh, continuous improvement. Reducing complexity or applying automations where applicable. Okay. Onboarding your customer into Central is one of the most important aspects of getting these configurations correct. Right. That is why you want to use a grouping mechanism like FM, ESS, ADV, you can call it whatever you want. But that filtering piece will go so much further when you have notifications and service templates and all of it kind of honed in and, and dialed in. Okay, so to wrap it up, keep it concise, keep it accurate, and keep N Central working for you not the other way around. Now, that being said, you know, for example, Mike is going to have to do some work in N Central. But eventually, if he gets his patch management under control, N Central is going to do the work for him. How do you ensure that each customer or device is set up correctly with the right customer ID or custom device property? Great, great question. <laughs> I'll get to that one in a sec, Andrew, because Mike made a funny where he's, he asked, can you clean up my Ancestral uh, for me? I don't. Um, I, actually, it's not that I don't, because I've, I've done it a thousand times. Um, but the thing is, there are other companies out there that have way more time than I do. I do boot camps and training, and I travel, and I go to events and all this other stuff. So I can't really kind of do that as a full-time gig anymore but I used to do it all the time. So I've been where you are, Mike. Um, but there are, if you reach out to your PSM, you can even get a professional service to do this for you, right? Either enable or third party. There's Sierra Pacific, there's an uh, uh, Able Ninja is one. So there's IT companies out there that just focus on dialing in Central. So if you need their help, you can do that too. Or if you wanna do it yourself, Feel free to send me an email. It's letter J M U R P H Y at n able.com. I can at least get you on the right track. Um, it does take me a while to respond to email. I'm already 400 emails behind. Um, so how do you ensure each customer or device is correctly is correctly with the right customer ID or custom device property? Okay, so let's talk more about that. Okay, so let's go into I always start with rules because that's where kind of we expose everything together. Right. So if I come in here. I need to know that I've got the right filtering, which encompasses the, the customer property, to the right customers, 
right? With the right maintenance, blah, 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 right? So how do you do that? Well, again, what I would do, Andrew, and Andrew, we've talked on the phone, I think a few times. Glad to see that you're back, by the way. Um, but it's one of those things that you want to use your NFR to be able to guide yourself methodically. What I would do is not here, let me go into here. I would go through your rules, right? Now, you can come into SQL 2000, right? You can even go to that filter and see if anything is even behind it. My guess, you're probably not, right? So try to, you gotta dial in the rules. You gotta dial in the notifications. And again, I like using the NF, NFR to be able to do that. Now, is it going to be perfect? You're going to make mistakes. We're all human, right? So maybe you're going to miss a particular customer, right? But if you do the right previews and the right compares, so if you go into filters and you go into, oh, let's see here. That's a good one. Usually I have some patch ones. So I go to, you know, my Patch Monday group. Well, it's an organizational property, patch day, I call it empower, Monday morning, which is going to target any of my devices. So device, custom property, patch day empower, device override equal to not set. Now, device, custom property, patch day empower, device override equal to Monday AM. So you can, again, I can flip things any which way I want. I can make automation work for me or automation work for itself, right? So just keep that in mind. Get more familiar with the power of filtering with custom properties, because if you understand those two pieces, rules and service templates and everything else, just simple. It's the custom property and the filtering that does that, the criteria piece, right? So it's, it's important that you understand um, how to use this. Book. So I would say start there. Um, I second Mike's question. Uh, once you are done with this, can you start? <laughs> Zach, I wish. Um, but again, Able Ninja, Sierra, Sierra Pacific are two companies that I'm aware of that does that do this as a professional service. And it's not that I want to be throwing your money away. And you know, I teach people how to fish, right? But can I do it for you? Not necessarily. I'm just one guy. So we've got 25,000 partners. So it's one of those things where if you have a need for more information, I can at least get you on the right track, right? Like, hey, I'm stumbled on uh, this a particular way how to do a custom property. Oh, show me the example. I'll 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 be I'll try to my best to kind of walk you through it. Okay. Guys, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you attending this boot camp. It is my first time doing this one, um, and based on your rating uh, of today, it looked looked like it went over very very well. Uh, oh, there's another question from Andrew. Okay. Uh, is there a way to automatically remove service applied by, okay. Is there a way to automatically remove service applied by templates when changing a custom device property? Is there a way to automatically remove service applied by templates when changing a custom device property? I'll say no. Based on how Ancentral works, monitoring, even when applied by a custom device property, doesn't necessarily get pulled off the way you think. And this is a this is a I'm glad you asked this question because most people don't understand how monitoring actually works in Ancentral. I shouldn't say it actually works. And you understand that it works and we monitor stuff and what have you, but it's the architecture of monitoring, right? So when I have where am I here? I'm under enable. So if I come into, I'll just go into workstations. So, no, there's no association here. Give me one sec. Or my workstation. Actually, I don't have workstations. Let's go into servers. That's why. Billy me. Let me go into servers dash windows. Where are you here? There we go. Oh, that was the default. 
Okay, duh. Let's go into servers dash windows clone. There. Now I'll see all of my servers. All right. So this is what we apply. This is the bundle of monitoring that we are applying to these devices. Right now, right now, it's been applied this way. Right now, if you understand rules, apply the monitoring to these devices because these devices fall under a server rule. Right. So the associated rule. Okay. SPS server and service dash windows to these devices. Oop, these devices. Now, if you flip a custom property, it's not going to pull monitoring off unless you have an action to be able to do that. Now, I don't think you can. Um, what you have to be able to do is go in and remove associations, right? Or, for example, say you wanted to delete that. No, I don't want to delete that. What's a good example here? Here, I'll just click delete. Actually, I don't want to do this in my lab. Let me go down to, I, I kind of know what you're getting at. You want to be able to pull off monitoring. How do you do that? Let me simply just tell you, this is how you do it. Okay, so you call it servers remove template. Okay, something like that. You go down to servers and you add in all of the monitoring that you actually want to remove. So I'm going to remove something like you know, BitLocker. You want to remove something like. Um, EDR. I'll, I'll just use those two. That's good enough. You'll get it after this. Now, typically we're adding in monitoring. We're not removing monitoring as a default. You can, right? Now, now that I set the action as a remove action, this is now a remove template. Now, you can also trigger this within a rule as well. Now, a remove action should happen once, really or maybe once every two months or three months or whatever. So you may want to keep your remove templates, but that is how you do it. And then what you do is I typically go to the all device view and then I filter on my servers and then I remove the monitoring that I, that I want to. Okay. I have to better understand the use case, Andrew. I just, right now I'm maybe drawing a blank or something. So, Anyways, guys, I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining. If you have any other questions, my email is letter J M U R P H Y J well, J Murphy at n-able.com. Thanks so much, and we'll see you soon. Take care.